Hey everybody, this is Brett, and the other day I was watching a video on genetically modified foods. And um, there was a young girl that's very much an advocate against that on a talk show with this older guy and this woman. And the guy was presenting his case for the GM foods and said, you know, there are people, millions of people that are hungry and so why wouldn't we want to create these GM foods that are insect resistant, etc., etc., you know, to be able to feed all these people? And she was a young person and didn't have an answer for that at the time. And I'm sure that if she'd have been able to think about it for a few minutes, she might have thought, well, if we feed all these people these Frankenstein foods, will that really be beneficial for them? Or will that just be a quick fix to keep them alive for a few years until they, they genetically mutate into some freaking thing and get dis-ease and then die of some horrible freaking death? I know, I've used freaking a lot there. <laughs> and then their country will backlash against us and shoot nuclear fucking missiles at us because we sold them something that was totally toxic, etc., etc. So when I first heard about genetically modified foods, I thought to myself, Oh my God, what are they doing now? <laughs> They're at it again. Someone's trying to make a lot of money. And um, your first inclination of something is generally the best, they say, and mine has not changed in these regards. You know, our world has evolved for millions and millions of years naturally. And for those of you that are religious or spiritual, you may also think, as I do, that natural is God. And God is the one that makes things fly. And we are able to do things on our own up to a certain degree. But if we go beyond that and try and change nature, then guess what happens? We get kicked in the ass. Like antibiotics, for instance, that the World Health Organization has now declared to be ineffective and has now created a massive bacterial problem for people. Okay? This is what's going to happen with genetically modified foods. Something crazy fucking unnatural is going to happen. And all of those people are going to be very angry at the United States for doing this to them, whatever it may be. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. They don't even know. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. I'm a naturalist, and I've seen all of the crap that human beings have done. And some things are good. But a whole lot of things are very, very much out of control. And, you know, spraying chemtrails in the sky to try and reduce the global warming. <laughs> That's another, oh my god, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> People are so, so, so fucking stupid. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing how greedy and stupid, just plain fucking stupid people but are. The, uh, uh, the fact was mentioned that corn, soy, and cotton, cotton, 90% of those foods grown in the U.S. are now GM. There are corn fields right down there that I guarantee you are genetically modified. And it's all about money. And it's not about respecting nature and understanding that if we do things that are just inherently against the natural ways that things are. You know, high breathing is one thing, but but genetically modifying something 
that I do not agree with. And that is also the thought, the thoughts of people in Europe, and that's why they've banned them. Okay? And now, is it really bad for a person to wear cotton that's not, that's genetically modified, that's not natural? And, um, you know, this really instills in me a desire to buy more and more organic cotton and less of the other because, you know, what my thoughts are on this. <laughs> and as for personal experience goes, organic cotton feels so damn good. So this shirt that I'm wearing right now is organic cotton and it just feels so good and it's lasted so long. I've been amazed at how well it's lasted. I get oil in it and and it never shows any oil. It always washes out perfect. It's amazing, seriously. So another thing that amazes me about all of this is when I took my trip last fall and I looked at all the fields, it was like 99% corn. GM corn so that they can make ethanol. And so what people are doing is they're burning up their resources. When they make that corn, what do you think is happening? Well, that corn is sucking nutrients out of the soil, right? And so then they make ethanol out of it, and then people burn it. And so pretty soon the soil gets more and more and more and more depleted, right? And so then what's it good for? Basically, you're going to have soil, thousands and thousands of acres, that are just basically dead soil. Now, I don't know what nutrients the corn utilizes, but um, I think this all coincides with a, a huge, massive population decrease. Massive. Because the weaker people get nutritionally, and the weaker their immune systems get, the more they're going to be susceptible to the bugs coming in and eating them. That's just how it is, and that's what's happening out there. And, you know, my other thoughts on this are that if you want to be one of the survivors, you're going to have to get to a place that's safe, and that's like at a higher elevation, where the soil is still good, high mountain valleys, where you've got premium soil, and away from the idiot mindset of places like the United States. I plan on leaving. I'm sure that that's what's going to happen eventually. For right now, I'm just trying to get strong and stay as isolated as I can for a while uh, until the time is right to split.